This is Twit. I'm going to ask Randall's kind of usual opening question, which, uh, as he describes it, is the kind of 30,000 foot view of, of WireGuard. So can you tell us um, just roughly what kind of WireGuard is and what problems it solves? And then we can drill down a bit more into the detail. Sure. So WireGuard is a secure networking tunnel. So it can be used for things like VPNs, for things like connecting data centers together uh, across the Internet. Um, kind of any place where you need to join two networks together in a secure way, WireGuard comes into play. And in the past, there have been a couple of solutions for this. Uh, well-known ones are IPsec and OpenVPN, and each kind of mm. have their big problems. Um, they're extremely complex, massive code bases, um, kind of bewildering protocols with um, decisions made, made on uh, kind of the crypto that we had in the 90s, but not really... Not really the things that we know since. So WireGuard kind of starts from a clean slate and a couple of new ideas and breaks down the, the assumptions we made in the 90s and um, has kind of a really clean, uh, uh, pristine protocol um, that we've actually implemented in less than 4,000 lines of code. So it has mm. a super small base, um, which means that anybody can read it. Um, it you don't need to be... Um, uh, 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 expensive security firm with a massive staff of uh, you know hundreds of people to divide it up into chunks to read it. It's, no, it's the kind of thing that kind of anybody interested in the security can sit down and read it in an afternoon. Um, and this aspect of auditability is really important. So we want something that's secure that uses modern crypto, uh, but it's something that people actually can read and trust from from being able to study it. Mm. And uh, what kind of, um, I mean, you mentioned there that, that, that we talked at the top about OpenVPN and some of the kind of issues that, that we've noticed with it. And these are quite kind of old solutions that um, that are based on, you know, as you say, old, the way cryptography worked in kind of the 90s and, and the technology that was around then. But what led you to um, to want to, to make WireGuard? Was that the main focus that you thought, I want to make something better than, than what's there? Uh, there are kind of two strains. Um one is that I uh, I moved to France and I wanted to get U.S. Netflix, so I needed to run a VPN <laughs> one way or another. Uh, so I had like a personal interest in running a VPN. Um, and when I when I sat down to set something up, um, I really just wasn't comfortable running IPsec or OpenVPN. I mean, I I've used them for years and I know how they work very well, but I didn't want to really run that on on my laptop, for example, a system that. I have to trust because it's my main system. It, it was just too scary of a code base to trust. And, uh, and having reviewed it many times, there are all sorts of terrifying issues with these things. And so it's just, I didn't want to run anything that was out there. Um, then, then there was kind of another strain, which is um, I, um, I, I work in the security industry. So I do a lot of uh, both offensive and defensive security. And mm. I've been working for a long time on... Um, and kind of a, a rootkit exfiltration method. Um, so oftentimes when you're in a network uh, doing a, a red team assessment or penetration test, you want to um, be able to maintain some persistence in the network for the duration of the assignment. Then also be able to exfiltrate data in a stealthy way um, so that you can uh, avoid the, the detections, um, so that you can, you can get the, the, the data out in a secure and stealthy way. And uh, what I realize is that a lot of the same techniques that I needed for secure exfiltration are actually perfect for a defensive VPN. Um, so WireGuard has a lot of these nice kind of stealth features built in where you can't scan for it on the internet. It's it's undetectable unless you know where it is. It won't respond to unauthenticated packets. Um, and again, it has a very small code size that can fit inside the kernel. Uh, so co kind of a combination of both these things is... Um, these offensive concerns, I, I need an exfiltration method and a rootkit. And then these kind of personal things, you know, I, I need a, a VPN that I that I actually trust to run. And, um, uh, and so WireGuard kind of came from these two strains together. Mm. Hey, I want to jump in if I can. Did you say 4,000 lines, 4K lines hmm. of code? That's right. It's less than 4K. I, I think we're at 3,700 right now. I mean, it, it varies, but yeah, less than 4,000. Does that include the routines for doing all of the crypto or all of those farmed out to libraries? No, so that I mean that obviously doesn't include the crypto primitives, right? But these are kind of you know well understood algorithms that 
that are implemented in the libraries, of course. Yeah. Uh, so this is just kind of the core logic of the protocol. Um, whereas if you look at things like OpenVPN and IPsec, um, the core logic of their protocols winds up being like way bigger than the primitives. Um, you know, we're talking like the order of hundreds of thousands of lines of code, the kind mm -hmm. of thing that you can never sit down and read an afternoon. And even after so many assessments and, uh, and teams auditing these code bases, people are still finding bugs because they're just too big and complex. Um, uh, and and they're, they're, they're old code too. Um, so yeah, so less than 4,000 lines of code. We're trying to keep it really clean and simple. So how, how have you managed to, to do so much with so little code? Are there any you know, secret tricks that you can share with us, or is it just all about <laughs> simplicity? Uh, so I guess there, there are a couple of things. Um, there aren't any secret tricks in like <laughs> you know, coding in a compact way or something, right? Uh, I don't want that. I want the code to be readable. So um, mm. there have been considerations from the beginning on keeping what WireGuard is and what it does very minimal and simple. Um, so, for example, the protocol that's using the cryptography, when we're designing the protocol, uh, thinking, well, how can we make this so that the state machine that this will inevitably require is as simple as possible? And these types of decisions then went into the cryptography we used in, in developing it, uh, which then ultimately result in a tiny implementation. There are other things like all the fields in the protocol are fixed length. Um, so we don't have to have any parsers. We just have kind of fixed length messages, fixed length offsets. And so if there are no parsers, then there are no parser bugs, right? Um, so kind of a, a bunch of simple things like this and uh, have all kind of added up to make it extremely simple core code base. So with that simplicity, is there a, a limitation of, of use case? So are, are, are there going to be still some you know obscure use cases where someone has to go use OpenVPN or IPsec? Uh, yes. And and here's where that comes in. WireGuard doesn't try to handle the, uh, the key distribution problem. Okay. So both IPsec and OpenVPN uh, have support for using certificates, X509 certificates. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, I should mention, when, when you try and use X509 certificates, you wind up implementing something called ASN1 to parse it. And AS and one parsers have been the victim of so many vulnerabilities through the years. Uh, this is like really kind of ugly thing. Uh, but in any case, WireGuard doesn't try to do the key distribution problem at all. Um, instead, it operates like what you're used to using with um, with SSH, where you have these really short base64 encoded public keys, and we exchange them somehow. It could be through GPG email. Uh, uh, but it could be in person, could be through some other mechanism like TLS if you're into that, uh, LDAP if you're into that. So sort of any existing thing that already does key exchange uh, works fine with WireGuard. Where all WireGuard cares about is I know your public key, you know my public key, a priori. Um, and so these are, I think, 44 characters of base 64, so you can copy and paste them around. Um, but then it also nicely stacks into these other things people already know how to use, like uh, LDAP or you know, databases, TLS, uh, email, uh, whatever other kind of mechanism. Whereas these other solutions like OpenVPN and IPsec, um, I guess especially OpenVPN, are kind of certificate-centric. Um, and that's not something I want to impose on people. Um, but on the other hand, it means that people coming from OpenVPN might be a little bit surprised to find out, oh, there are no certificates. Uh, we have to share public keys through some other mechanism.